Welcome back to Dynamics Unplugged. Today we're going to be bringing you a new series where every day for the next 26 working days, we're going to be dropping new content. Why the number 26? Well, rather than giving you one topic repeatedly, we're going deep dive on a single topic. Thought it'd be fun to use the alphabet, to come up with a completely different topic every single day on something in Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain Management. So starting today with the letter A, going every day until we get to Z. What topic we're actually going to choose for the letter Z, who knows, but we have some time to figure that one out. Starting with the letter A gives us a lot of opportunity and a lot of different scenarios to cover. Looking at modules alone, we have accounts payable, accounts receivable, asset leasing, and asset management, just to name a few. But I'd rather focus on a feature or functionality in the inventory management module, which is the arrival overview. A really useful form, especially if you're not using warehouse management, but you want to gain efficiencies in the receiving process. The forms really built off the purpose of using what's called profiles, and those have two major functions. The first is defaulting what information you want to query on. For example, in my inquiry profile, I'm looking at purchase orders and transfer orders only, and I'm looking 90 days into the future and 90 days back for my expected receipt dates. I also have a filter on Warehouse 11. In today's profile name, I'm only looking at orders that are expected to be received today or are already past due, but I'm not filtering on any warehouse and I'm looking at all of the receipt transaction types. And then I even have another profile, for example, that only looks at return orders. So those profiles allow me to filter on that information. So when I'm looking at many orders at once, I know that I'm only looking at ones that are relevant for what I'm doing at that time. I'm not getting a list of everything under the sun. The second thing it does after filtering is defaulting information. If you're receiving a purchase order into an item that is inventory controlled and is inventory controlled to the point of the level of bin location, you have to assign a bin location either defaulted on the item or during the receiving process. So this journal allows us to populate information like the warehouse and the inventory location the items will be received into. This is really useful if you're receiving many lines or many purchase orders at once into a generic staging area, and the items are going to sit in that location until somebody like a material handler is later able to put them away to their final location. So we can actually default in that location for those lines from this form as well. We'll go back into our form. I'm going to use that inquiry option as my profile I want to filter on and I'll click update. That's going to make sure that this middle section shows me the real time orders that match this criteria. So I should only see purchase orders and transfer orders for warehouse 11 that have receipt dates that fall within that range. And I can see lots of orders are showing up. And as I select those here in the bottom part of the form, I'll actually see which items or which lines are associated with those orders. If a truck were to arrive for a particular vendor and that's existing of multiple purchase orders or many items, that's really useful because now I can select all of those and receive them all at once. I'll take a couple of these purchase orders and do just that. So we're going to take this first purchase order here, 1609. We'll take purchase order 1660. And we'll see that has an item on it as well. And we'll also take purchase order 37, which has just one line on it also. One of the setups I want to check before we kick off this process is that the item itself has some defaults set up. In a non-warehouse management scenario, we're typically setting up what's called warehouse items, where we have rules for different types of locations. This item in my warehouse 11 doesn't seem to have one, so I'm going to actually set that up really quickly. I'm going to give it a default receiving location. It's always received in our ECV. The default issue location, essentially the picking. Um, for 
things like production and issuing out and then the actual picking location where if we're creating a picking route in that warehouse so i'm going to set up three defaults there on that item just to make sure we don't get any errors in our process because the intent of that arrival overview is as i start to initiate the receipt against these items they're all going to be received into that inbound doc and then somebody's going to have to move them later on so i want to have my right rules in place for that I've now selected three purchase orders. I'm going to click this start arrival button. You see they disappear from the middle section, and that's because my query is set to only show lines that haven't been completed yet. If I look at now what's in progress, I should see those same lines and anything that's been already received. And there at the bottom are my three purchase orders. I just started the arrival. It's created a journal of type item arrival of 423. So as long as I'm showing those lines, from here I can reselect them and then say show the arrivals from those lines. Uh, if I lost those and were not able to find them, that same form can be found in the inventory management module under your journal entry. So you're looking for the item arrival. This creates the journals that were posted when I selected those lines. Here's my three items. You can see the location and warehouse defaulted in like I had in my arrival profile. This one item doesn't have a location. If I look at that item, it's likely that that item is not set up to be stocked at the location level. So a location isn't required for this particular item, and it's not. This item is set up just to be stocked at the site and warehouse level. So I have my site and warehouse. I have my location on the two lines that have it. If I received a partial, I could come in here and edit those quantities, but it did default in the quantities that were open on the lines. If I needed to register other information like a batch number or a serial number, I could do that here as well. If I wasn't sure if these items required that, I could validate the journal before posting, and that will tell me if there's any missing required information for any of these lines. This journal produced no errors, so I don't have to record any additional information. I'm going to be expecting to receive seven 15 and one for each of these lines respectively. In the line details is the associated information, which purchase order they were from, uh, the quantity, the account number. So all of that is maintained, even though I had multiple purchase orders in this journal. And I'm gonna go ahead and post it. You can see my operation's been completed. My journal's been posted. So if we are actually to go into one of those purchase orders and view those lines, what do you expect to see essentially is the question you should be asking yourself. We've done a receipt against some of these lines and we wanna see what transactional status they're in. If I were to go to the general tab and I were to say, just look at the line quantity of all the lines, you can see there's registered status here essentially that is what we've done with the item arrival journal is the registration if you're using warehouse management today that's the same process that happens when you do the registration in the mobile app we haven't posted the product receipt which is why nothing has gone into receipt there's no physical cost and we haven't posted a receipt but we've registered those goods the stock is in our warehouse and exists and is recognized so we're in a registered status so those lines have been updated to registered on posting of the item, item arrival journal. Now I want to post the product receipt. If it's one person doing that, or even if it's someone matching the registration to the product receipt, they can do that right here from the warehouse arrival journal. So if I, as a material handler or receiver said, I've posted this arrival journal and then handed that off to a buyer maybe to post the product receipt, they can come into this arrival journal go up to functions and click product receipt and it's going to essentially bring up a uh, a form to receive those now it looks like i have never confirmed my purchase orders so let me go ahead and do that really quick so that i can post the product receipt a mandatory step in the process so we'll make sure those purchase orders are confirmed purchase order 37 appears to be Purchase order 1660 still needs to be confirmed. We'll do a quick confirm on this one. And 
we'll double check our last purchase order 1609 just so we don't get the same error again in case this one isn't and this one appears to be confirmed so all the po's are confirmed now we'll go ahead and attempt to post our product receipt again we should see an info log and it's telling us that the current quantity value is the registered quantity which is actually what uh we want even though it tells us the recommended is ordered and the reason i say we want registered is if i just received a partial i changed the quantity on one of those lines and i asked it to use the ordered quantity it's going to attempt to post the product receipt for the entire open quantity on the line versus the registered quantity which is the quantity i've recognized as being received into stock so i'm going to say no i'm going to leave that as the quantity i've registered and I can put in my vendor packing slip number. Which maybe is today's date or something generic. I can see the lines that had been registered and I can start my receipt process from here, including printing it or producing any labels that I need to. Now you can see my operation has been completed. So I've actually just gone ahead and done a query on orders that showed up at warehouse at 11 on a certain date. Selected three of them for arrival. Registered all three POs simultaneously through the arrival journal and then posted the product receipts all in one form, essentially starting with the arrival overview, going through the journal arrival creation and even doing the product receipt directly from the journal lines themselves. And that's a wrap on Dynamics ERP A to Z, Dynamic Soup, and we'll be back tomorrow with the letter B.